What's up everybody, Justin here from My Mac Mentor with a list of steps you should do before you bring your computer in for repair. It finally happened. The keys on your MacBook Pro aren't responding. There's a crack on your screen. The battery no longer holds enough of a charge to make it useful for you. A repair is in your future, which entails bringing the Mac to the Apple Store or an Apple authorized service provider, or even shipping it back to Apple. Regardless of what repair approach you take, there are some steps that we and Apple highly recommend that you follow first. Why? Three reasons. You have to protect yourself from data loss. The Mac could be lost or damaged while it's out of your control, or the repairs might require replacing the internal hard drive or the logic board, or even the entire computer, even if you don't anticipate that as the fix. You need to protect your data from prying eyes. This is especially true if you store passwords in an insecure way, but you know better and you're using a password manager, aren't you? Also, Apple needs to be able to use the Mac sufficiently in order to determine that their repair works. So here's what you should do if possible. Depending on what's wrong with your Mac, you may not be able to perform all or any of these tasks. And if that's the case, complete as many as you can. Number one, backup your Mac. The one thing you must do is make a backup of your data or preferably two. There's no guarantee that you'll get the same Mac back with the same internal storage or even the same hard drive. But since you're already backing up, right? This should be mostly a matter of just updating your backups. We recommend both using Time Machine and using a duplication app like Carbon Copy Cloner. That second backup protects you against the first one failing when you try to restore. It's uncommon, but not unknown. You could do a third backup to an online service like Backblaze. It's a great idea, but it doesn't really help in this scenario unless something happened to both your other backups. If your Mac laptop boots, but you can't use it due to a broken keyboard or trackpad, remember you can always attach an external keyboard and mouse. And if you have a broken screen, try to put the laptop in what they call target disk mode to make another backup to yet another Mac. Boot the computer holding down the letter T to get to target disk mode. The second thing you're gonna to wanna to do is enable guest access. For some problems, the repair technician may need to verify that your Mac is functioning normally after the repair. Imagine trying to verify that each of the keys on your keyboard work. Don't give the repair tech your admin password if possible, because that gives them full access to everything you have. Instead, head over to System Preferences under your Apple menu and choose Users and Groups. Click the lock on the bottom left of the Preference pane to unlock it, and click Guest User in the sidebar and then select allow guests to log on to this computer. Also click login options, make sure automatic login is turned off. It's locked off when File Vault is enabled, which we obviously recommend. And display login window and choose list of users. This will show your user and a guest user that the Apple repair tech can use. The third thing you're gonna to wanna to do is turn off Find My Mac. Apple says that it can't repair a Mac unless Find My Mac is enabled, presumably due to some sort of activation lock preventing certain types of fixes. Although some people have pointed out that this requirement is also useful for proving that you own the Mac and you know the right Apple ID and password, et cetera, et cetera. Regardless, it's really easy to turn off. Again, system preferences under the Apple menu, choose Apple ID and iCloud and uncheck the checkbox next to Find My Mac. Make sure to turn it back on when you get your Mac back. The fourth thing you're gonna to wanna to do is turn off your firmware password. Few people have been Enable the firmware password on a Macs with Apple Silicon, you know, the M style ones, it doesn't support it. But you have an older Intel machine with a firmware password, you're gonna have to turn it off before the Mac can be repaired. To do this, start up in Mac OS Recovery, choose Utilities, Start Up Security Utility or Firmware Password, and click to turn it off. You probably have to enter the firmware password just to make sure that it works, and then you quit the utility, restart your Mac and you're good to go. Number five, deauthorize your computer for iTunes store purchases. You don't have to deauthorize your Mac before sending it in for repair, but it can save you some headaches later on. Certain types of repair might change the identity of the Mac in such a way that it's no longer authorized, but it does take up one of your five authorizations. Authorizing another Mac could require that you first deauthorize all of your computers, which you can do only once per year. Luckily, deauthorizing a Mac is easy to do. In either the music app or the TV app, choose account, authorizations, deauthorize this computer. Sign in with your Apple ID and click deauthorize when prompted. The same sub menu lets you reauthorize it when you get the machine back. For extra, extra security, those whose Macs contain truly sensitive data, you know, patient records, corporate trade secrets, space laser access codes, may wish to take additional steps to ensure that no data could be compromised. 
The first step is to turn on File Vault, which encrypts the entire contents of the Mac's internal storage. This is quick and easy on Macs with the T2 chip or Apple Silicon, where it piggybacks on the fact that internal storage is already encrypted. On an older Mac, encrypting a large drive may take several hours. In an ideal world, of course, you already have File Vault on because that's the way you should be working. If that's not the case, turn it on now. We'll wait. That may be sufficient if your data is sensitive, but not life-changing sensitive. If you're storing the equivalent to the keys to Fort Knox, take the next step, which is to actually erase your Mac after you make your backups. The best way to do this varies depending on your computer. On a newer Mac, an M-Style or T2 running macOS Monterey, the newest operating system currently, go to Apple Menu System Preferences, click the System Preference menu in the menu bar, and choose Erase All Contents and Settings to launch the Erase Assistant. This approach erases all of your data by destroying the encryption keys needed to decrypt the data. It's extremely quick and extremely secure. For older computers, ones that don't have a T2 chip or something running an earlier operating system from macOS 11 or earlier, boot your Mac into recovery mode and use the disk utility to erase the internal hard drive and reinstall macOS. If you're erasing your hard drive, click one of the security options and choose how many passes of random zeros to write to the disk. Two, three, or even seven. These extra passes take a long time and the option isn't available for solid state drives, which obviously can't be securely erased other than turning off file vault. Needless to say, when you get the Mac back, you'll need to restore all your data from your backup. It'll be time consuming, but it's a small price to pay for peace of mind. Don't go overboard though. Almost no one needs to worry about this level of security, and if you do, you probably work for an employer with policies and practices to protect data. For the rest of us, it's just a matter of being sensible and cautious by making backups, enabling guest access, and turning off Find My Mac. That should make it a lot easier to get your computer repaired. I'm Justin from My Mac Mentor.